Hey everybody, today we're going to be taking a look at this simplex model number 4274-2 electrically driven coated pole station. Now if you uh, look at my channel you'll see that I've already filmed a video demonstration of this using a simplex uh, 4051 horn. However, uh, this in-depth video was requested by Electronic Wiz 101. So we're going to take a detailed look at the inside of this pole station and uh, I'm going to explain as best I can how it works because to be honest there's so much going on in there and so much like design and engineering that went into this that uh, <laughs> there's, there's a lot to understand that's going on in there and there's some things that I don't fully understand how it works either but I'm going to do my best so let's go ahead and get started and take a look at the inside of this. So when you open up the interior of the pole station, you'll see what at first glance looks like the coating wheel from a simplex uh, 4208 fire alarm system. You can see we have the code wheel here with the removable tabs, and then right here is the micro switch that will uh, press against each of these tabs as they go by, which will close the connection. Now the current does not flow completely through that micro switch. That micro switch is connected to a relay on the inside of the station which we'll take a look at in a minute. And if we move the frame down here just a bit, you can see, well actually, here's one of the, one of these two relays that I was just talking about is what connects to the micro switch. Um, you'll see that there's the standard push button on this assembly that looks just like the interior of one of these non-coated pull stations. And that's essentially what this is. The entire front half of this unit is just a non-coated pull station that we're used to seeing from that era and then this entire coating module has been added on to the back. So now we're going to go ahead and take a look at the motor assembly and we're going to see how the station is able to do the four rounds of code and then stop. So looking back behind the code wheel you can see all of the gear assemblies um, that connect from the motor here up to the code wheel. Now I know this is difficult to see but if you look right here and right here, and you can see the wires running to them, there are two very small micro switches that are uh, back here by the gears. If you see this thin piece of metal right here, the piece of silver right uh, above the pen, that's a larger wheel that will rotate uh, every time the code wheel does four rotations around that wheel on the inside will have rotated once. Uh, I don't know what the actual gear ratio uh, for the motor is, so it could be that it's just linked directly to the motor, but I don't believe that it is. So basically, this wheel has an indentation on it that its starting position is up by these micro switches. When the motor is activated, that wheel will turn with the whole assembly, and as the code wheel does four rounds of code, that uh, metal wheel will rotate back around to its position, and the micro switches are constantly tracking the location of this switch. They have little rollers on the levers so they can follow it around, uh, tracking the position of the wheel, excuse me. I don't know if I actually said wheel or not. Um, and when that wheel returns back to its initial position, meaning that the coding wheel has done four rounds of code, that will trigger one of the micro switches and it will cut the motor. So that's how we're able to get the four rounds of code even though it's electrically driven. Here's what I'm hoping is a slightly better look at those micro switches. Uh, this is a whole assembly in the back is very small and very tightly packed together so it's difficult to find a good camera angle to see anything. Here's the first micro switch over on the left and then there's the other micro switch here on the right. Earlier I mentioned the rollers that follow that wheel. You can see one of the rollers right down here in addition to uh, part of the indentation on the wheel. And I'm going to shift the camera again to see if we can get another angle that'll work. So I know this is a really cramped and weird angle and I'm using this pen here to hold the wires from the micro switch out of the way. But this gives you a pretty good view of that indentation on the wheel that'll rotate in addition to the lever with the roller on there which is tracking the rotation of this wheel. Uh, taking a closer look at it, I think what I said earlier about it being directly connected to the motor is correct. If I move the pen down a little bit, you can see 
right about where I'm pointing is where that indentation stops. And as you can see as I follow along here with the pen, that's where there's a slight cutout in that wheel. And I'm going to try to get this thing connected and I'll let it spin from the same vantage point a little bit later in the video. So um, if you want to you know, see how that operates, stay tuned. Otherwise I'm going to move on to a different part of this station for right now. So right here we're looking at the uh, bottom of the pole station. Here's the two relays that I mentioned earlier. And once again, like I said in the last shot, after I get this thing connected, um, I'll film another video from these angles showing how everything works. Right here we have this capacitor. I can't tell if this is a starting capacitor for the motor or if it's actually a filtering capacitor for the zone that it's connected to, but I have a suspicion that it's actually a filtering capacitor because uh, if you listen to the coding being run on horns from a wind-up pull station, it's kind of, you know, jerky and poppy and the horn won't sound perfectly clearly during the code. But from this station, the horn sounds really clear, so I'm wondering if that capacitor is actually connected in there so that it can kind of smooth out the uh, coding from the code wheel and the micro switch, which can get a little, you know, intermittent as it sparks, not completely a clean connection. Right here is the back of the trouble light on the front. This is just a 120 volt incandescent bulb. And then over here, it's kind of in the dark. I'll see if I can light that up a little bit more. That's a little bit better. This is the uh, switch on the front that's used for uh, resetting the pull station. And that uses a simplex A or a 424 key in order to operate. And these uh, two devices, the light and the relay, are tied into one of these relays and then the micro switch that actually runs the coding I believe is tied into another one of these relays. So what I'm going to do now is actually connect it to 120 volts and we're going to see this thing in action. So now I've gone ahead and connected 120 volt power to this unit and we're going to go ahead and see how all this works. Now although I'm pretty sure that I'm the only one who has uh, one of these units floating around out there. Uh, I will ask that you guys watching don't try to do anything like this um, because of you know some of the dangers of 120 volt current if you're not careful um, it's better off if you're gonna be messing with 120 volts put it in a back box leave it alone don't handle it like I'm gonna be doing so now I'm gonna go ahead and turn on the power and we're gonna see how these relays on the back of the unit respond So I wasn't watching, there might have been some sort of movement in the relays, or there might not have been. But now I'm going to turn the reset switch on the front of the unit, and we'll see what happens then. So you can see it was the relay on the right that's responding to the reset switch in addition to the 120 volt power feed. So now I got the camera back looking at that indentation on the wheel that rotates around and I think this is going to be a pretty good view of it so you can see what's going on. You'll be able to see the code wheel here rotating around. There's my pen. And you see the indentation right here that you'll be able to see rotating around when I activate the station. So I'm going to go ahead and pull it and we'll see. Now you see the indentation move out of there, and it activated one of the micro switches. So that was one round, starting its second round. Just finished its second round, going to be going into its third round. And here comes the fourth round. And 
now you can see here comes that indentation. And now you can see the lever from the micro switch fell back into that indentation, which stopped the motor after four rounds. So now we're still looking at the back of the unit again, and I'm going to go ahead and pull the pull station. And we're going to see it run through four rounds of code, and we're going to see what the relays are doing during that time. So as you can hear, the unit is currently running its code. And I honestly expected one of these two relays to be uh, wired into the micro switch. However, it now appears that this relay is acting along with the reset switch. What this relay is acting as right now is the shunt, which cuts off the power to the remainder of the circuit while the pull station is operating. What that does is it prevents multiple codes from being transferred um, to the horns from multiple pull stations. So the device that is electrically closest to the panel um, when they're operating, if, you know, there's a scenario where multiple pull stations have been activated, that's the pull station that will take priority over the rest because this relay would have cut power to the remainder of the circuit. So as you can hear, it just finished up as four rounds of code. I'm going to go ahead and turn the reset switch, and we'll probably see both of these relays return to their normal positions. Actually, I have to reset the front of the unit first, which could get interesting while it's sitting upside down. Alright, so there goes the handle. Now, we'll go ahead and do the reset switch. So as you can see now both of the relays are back to their normal positions. So now that we're all done with that I'll show a close up of the reset sequence. First of all of course you have to open up the front cover in order to reset the handle. There it goes. And then you have to insert the key into the reset key slot Hang on, my keys got all tangled which will return the relays to their normal position so there you have it hopefully this uh, video gives kind of a better idea of how this pull station operates and uh, thank you guys for watching. Have a great day.